Hello, this is the library instruction session for COM 101, writing for mass media. Uh, this is for instructors uh, Schultz and Schenkel. Uh, I'm John Hickok, the communications librarian. That's my job to instruct COM classes on library resources. So for COM 101, you can see here that you're learning how to write uh, in a news media or journalistic style. So, but whenever you're writing for events in the news or, or any kind of events, you cannot just make things up. You, you got to have facts and accurate information. So where do you go to find all that? Well, there's two resources that I'm going to teach you here today. First, the internet, and then second, library resources. So this handout that I prepared for you here, I'm going to explain both of those. So let's start, start with the first uh, option, the internet. Sure, the internet's great. We... We librarians use it. It's a fantastic resource, but it's used in addition with library resources, um, not as a replacement. So there's a couple of things on the internet that are really helpful tools. I just want to quickly go over with you. You, Everybody already knows Google. That's a search engine you can use, of course. Uh, but if you're going to use Google, why not use Google Advanced Search? So as you can see here on the screen, Google Advanced is the same as Google. It's the same Google, but it gives you more boxes and more options for doing more powerful searching. So for example, one of the things you can do is you can limit your searching, get rid of all the .com sites that are cluttering up your results and limit it only to .org or .edu or .gov or some other kinds of sites. Uh, another search engine is an actually a directory of things on the internet. It's kind of cool. Um, a directory, um, it's compiled by humans, by librarians all over the world of cool websites um, that are all over the internet. It's called Curly. And uh, like I said, it categorizes information. For example, let's say you wanted to find some information about bullying. Uh, that's a major societal topic in schools today. So yeah, you could go to the categories and you can see on Curly, there's different categories there. So you'll see right here, um, arts, games, news, recreation, science, sports, society, and so on and so on. So you could um, pick whatever categories you want, and then you click on it, and it'll give you subcategories and subcategories and subcategories until it gives you websites on exactly what you want. So that's another option for you. How about encyclopedias? Well, everybody, of course, knows Wikipedia. It's the most famous online internet encyclopedia. But the problem is it's not accepted by your professors. Yeah, you can consult it for initial information. You just got to realize you can't blindly believe information on Wikipedia. And you know the reason why. Your professors have told you content is posted anonymously. So there's no way to know the credentials or the author or the accuracy. So whatever you learn on Wikipedia, you got to cross check that against other sources like library resources that I'm going to show you. There are some other encyclopedias online. They're free. Encyclopedia.com and Britannica.com. You may have actually even gone to these two sites. They're on the internet. They're free. Yeah, these are free. but And they're convenient, but they have limitations. They may only provide abbreviated information. Britannica sometimes just gives you teasers of their encyclopedia entries. And then it'll fade off and say, if you want further, uh, you have to subscribe and pay money. Um, Encyclopedia.com is also, it's free, but it has older information on it. They have encyclopedias from like 1994 encyclopedia. Now that's fine if you're doing some research about uh, the Roman Empire. <laughs> that hasn't changed in uh, since 1994. But if you're doing something on um, U.S. presidents, well, according to the 1994 encyclopedia.com article, Bill Clinton is still the current president. Okay, well, that's that's not going to be helpful. So, yeah, you can use these if you want, but um, they have limitations. What about finding facts on the Internet? Yeah, yeah. I put a few really, really well-known sites that are fact sites. The Pew Research Center is a major, well-known, respected uh, research website that researches societal topics. So they have breakdowns on all kinds of topics. Same thing with the Gallup. Oh, you probably have heard of Gallup. They pull Americans on what do you think about taxes? What do you think about student loans? What do you think about crime in the cities? And then they do polls and then they post the results. 
Uh, so those two websites are well known and well respected. They've been around for decades and decades and decades. Uh, there is a really good fact link site uh, called repdesk.com. And it has uh, lots and lots and lots of links of just big factual information. Everything from um, uh, currency converters to language converters to um, government websites, how to find your congressman, <laughs> all kinds of things. So you can check that one out. The only problem with this site called refdesk.com is it's got a really messy organization. It's like somebody just spit up all kinds of links on a really, really messy website. So if you can clutter, if you can get through the, the clutter of the mess, uh, there's a lot of really good links to all kinds of factual information. Fact checking websites are very important. We hear a lot of stuff on Google, on um, on um Facebook, on Huffington Post, on, on Google uh, uh, News Bites, and a lot of it, you're like, what? Is that really true? Is that fake news? Right. So these are very well-known and well-respected fact-checking sites. Snopes, Lead Stories, Check Your Fact, and FactCheck.org, where you can go and you can type in and look for things. Like, um, not just political, but on all kinds of rumors or urban legends that you may hear or read on the internet. You can go to these sites and see if they really are true or not. Biography.com is a good fact site about biographical information on famous people. And then the demographic or census sites. If you want to find statistics on populations of cities, counties, states, or the whole country then these demographic sites, which draws from the census data, will help you with that. Finally, I want to point out that whenever you find any kind of information on the internet, you got to be careful. Uh, websites often contain wrong, inaccurate, or just plain bad information. So you got to critically evaluate uh, sites before you trust any uh, claims that, or, or data that you see there. We librarians came up with this really cool test called the CRAP test. <laughs> it's a funny acronym, but it's these are the things you got to ask yourself anytime you come to a website off of a Google of, off of a Google search. Is it current? Is it relevant? Is it authoritative? Is it accurate? And what's its purpose? Is is it biased? Um, so yeah, I gave you a practice. You can check out these two websites, and you can see is is it a legit site or is it like fake fake news? Or is it a, an actual legit site? So you can practice these later if you want to go check these two test sites out. Okay, so that's it for internet. Now let's get to library resources because this is where you can really get some good stuff uh, when you're uh, researching and writing on a journalistic news current event topic. At the library, at the Cal State Fullerton's library homepage, this is our homepage. This is the starting place, library.fullerton.edu. Okay. Now, at, at the homepage, there's two sites that you're going to go to the most. Databases, which is this icon right here, and OneSearch, which is this search box right here. And by the way, here's a little bonus. You can get help from librarians immediately, 24 hours a day, at this Get Help button. That will connect you to a chat window, and you can, you can chat. Um, during the daytimes, um, it's us. It's the Cal State Fullerton librarians are monitoring the chat box every weekday during the daytimes. At night and on the weekends, we hire a night librarian service who will keep monitoring the chat window so you can get um, help from librarians every, every day, 24-7. Yep, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go to these databases. Well, we have many databases that will help you find information when you're doing research. The first kind of database is when you go to the database icon right here, is newspaper databases. Mm -hmm. Newspaper databases look like these. We have two of them. One of them is called US News Stream. Here it is right here. And this is our nationwide newspaper database. It contains full text newspaper articles from all new major newspapers all over the US. So this is nationwide, New York Times, LA Times, Chicago Tribune, everything. The California Custom News Database, that searches newspapers too, but just California's smaller newspapers, like the Orange County Register, the Riverside Press Enterprise, San Diego Union Tribune, etc. So both of these databases are great for finding news stories. So you just simply go to the databases, 
it's going to give you an A to Z list of all of our databases. And then just type in, go to U for US News Stream or C for California Custom News. Then you'll pull up this screen and you can start typing in keywords, just like a Google search. Instead of giving you websites like Google does, it will give you newspaper stories, the full text, the whole newspaper story right there that you can read. So that's pretty cool. Great way to get good news information from newspapers all over the country or all over California. How about magazines? Yep, we have a magazine database that does the same thing. We have Reader's Guide, all of our general magazines. So that's things like Time, People, Rolling Stone, Sports Illustrated, Cosmopolitan. Or we also have another database, and both of them look like this. This is what the screen looks like. Another one called Business Source Premier. That's just searching business magazines. You know, things like Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Fortune, Inc., Money Magazine, etc. So these databases work exactly the same way. It gives you search boxes, just like Google. You type in your keywords, what you're looking for, and up will pull up magazine stories and, um, and magazine articles rather than websites. Okay. Now, there's a caution. Sometimes the magazines don't give you the full text immediately all of the time. Sometimes you'll just get an abstract or summary. So that's not good enough. How, how can you get the full text? All right, no problem. On every database, we've installed a little referral button, a little blue and orange find it button. It looks like that. If you don't see the full text immediately, that's no problem. Just click on that little blue pop-up uh, button. And it'll bring a pop-up window up, and it will refer you where you can go get the full text, like maybe to another database, or you can request it and order it for free by interlibrary loan. Okay, next. How about... Scholarly articles. Yeah, we have databases for scholarly. You don't want a magazine. You don't want a newspaper. You want a study, like an academic scholarly study. Yep, we have a lot of databases for every major. But a good multidisciplinary uh, scholarly journal database is called Academic Search Premier. So you get to it. Remember I said that when you click on databases, it will take you to an A to Z list? That's right. Here's what it looks like. A to Z, and here's A, B, C, D, 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 all the way to Z. So you just click on the name of whatever database you want. So in this case, A, I'll click on A, thank you. And then it'll bring up Academic Search Premier. And then I can start searching it. And we'll pull up scholarly articles from scholarly journals. What about if you want to search a database of a specific major? Yep, you can. Uh, the A to Z list is the one way you can search, but you can also search by subject for major specific databases. See, here is a pull down menu and it'll pull down and get list all the majors at Cal State Fullerton. So for example, let's say you were doing research on Fullerton overcrowding. Yep, you could choose your subject criminal justice, like the criminal justice majors. I would click right here, pull down the pull down list and choose criminal justice. And then I can go to a database for that major. There's one that is called Criminal Justice Abstracts Database. All right. What about facts databases? Yep, we got a lot of facts too. The databases that just not pull up long articles from newspapers or magazines, but just pull up facts. We do. So here's a whole bunch of them. Uh, you would go to the letter G right here, go to G, and you go to Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. This is a great database that pulls up all kinds of factual um, pro and con debates on different topics in society. Same thing with CQ Researcher. You can pull up and it'll bring up browse issues. So on both of these, you can see here, browse issues, it gives you a long list of topics. And let's say you were doing your research on e-cigarettes and vaping. Yep, you could go down, There's that's listed there in the categories, and then it'll bring up a whole paper. It's like a whole term paper all about e-cigarettes and vaping. And then you can borrow, quote, um, copy some of the uh, quotes in this term paper from Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. Same thing for CQ Researcher. You can browse topics. Like let's say you wanted to be research on professional video gaming. Yep, they have a laundry list of topics and then you can go and then you can click and read the whole report. Same thing for encyclopedias. Remember on the internet, we talked about how Wikipedia and the Encyclopedia and Britannica uh, have limitations. Oh, well, for our encyclopedias, there's no limitations. We pay money for them. So you get the full article 
from our two encyclopedia databases. They are called Gale Encyclopedias or eBooks and Oxford Reference Encyclopedias. So both of these are encyclopedias and they're full text written by scholars, which your professors will accept as sources. So you can click and write, uh, go to those. But what about if you want just some statistics, not a whole long article, just some statistics like a bar charts or pie charts. Yep, we got a database for that too. It's called Statista. Here's what it looks like. You can go in, type in the search box, whatever you're looking for. Let's say you were looking for the number of iPhones that have been made each year. You type that in and it puts all kinds of charts. So here's a chart of Apple worldwide shipments of smartphones from 2010 to 2023. Yeah, they're shipping a lot. So there you go. There gives you statistics instantly that you can quote and use in your research paper. Finally, how about uh, books? Yeah, don't overlook books. To search for books, this is when you don't use databases. This is when you use the other option at the library's homepage. Right here, our search box. So you can go to the search box. I don't recommend the little baby single box. I think the advanced search is much better. You can click it and it'll bring up a more powerful with more options and more boxes there. So you can set it to Cal State Fullerton Books and then type in your keywords and then bingo. You'll immediately see either uh, a floor location, which is a print book. And if that's the case, you can go to that floor and you can pull the book off this self, the shelf yourself. Our library is self-service. And then just take it to the first floor, uh, which is the checkout or circulation desk, and you can check it out and take it home. Your Titan card is your library card. But many other uh, cases you'll see, you won't see a floor location. You'll just see a link. And the link means it's an ebook. So that's great. You don't even have to come to the library. You just can click on that and you can start reading the ebook e immediately. Pretty cool. Okay, so there you go. That is in a quick overview, lots of resources to help you with your research for COM 101. All right, good luck and wish you the best.